Hello Sim Gamers and welcome back to Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access for Science! We are doing the exploration mode in our Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program 2 Exploration. And it is time for us to go to Mission Control once again, as we will do in every episode, and grab all of our new missions before proceeding. So let's take a look at one small step. Time to prove the Mun is not made of spicy space cheese. Land on the surface of the Mun. Mission debrief, or brief. Greetings, Director. Sorry to be single-minded, but all of us in Mission Control want to get started right away. Your objective is to land a rocket on the surface of the Mun. You'll want to land slowly, preferably under 10 meters per second. The lack of atmosphere means parachutes won't work at all. You can pump your brakes by gently burning retrograde. Remember, you'll want to cancel out all your horizontal velocity before falling to the ground. Sure, landing your, on your side might be fun, but launching from that position is a leading cause of go boom. Once you're falling ver vertically, use SAS to orient yourself radial out to keep the pointy end up. Then extend your landing legs and slowly coast down, feathering the, sl the throttle to slow your descent. After you've completed the most significant achievement in world history, we're going to need one of uh, one of the crew to look outside and uh, verify something. Remote observation has shown us, that, shown us that the crust of the mun is covered with regolith. That's just a fancy word for loose rocks and dust. The mun is likely a rock covered in smaller rocks, but there is an infinitesimally small chance that it is not. You want to know what else it could be? Promise not to judge? I don't want to worry you, but the head of the snacks department stopped by today. They have a vested interest in this mission, and if we don't confirm the MUN's surface comp composition for them, they're going to cut off our snack supply. Shh, don't repeat it. The engineers are super hear have super hearing. I realize this is ridiculous, but we need to prove that the surface of the MUN is not made of cheese, butter, marshmallow cream, or any other spreadable dairy product. Of course, I told him the odds of any Dara product surviving the cold vacuum of space was nil, but until we can disprove this notion of a delicious mun, the snack department will never give us a moment's peace. While we wait for you to send word, I'll be doing a bit of stress decorating. The colors you choose for your flag show a refined taste, but this room still lacks atmosphere. What? <laughs> I figured a joke might lighten things up. So, comedy doesn't float your boat? Fine. I like a sense of humor. We're going to go ahead and track that mission. First dibs. Maxo Construction Toys wants to make an action figure of a Kerbal Space Program holding a Kerbal Space Center flag. Their creative director, Francois, has said, I don't accept, thing, accept anything short of the real thing. Would you land on a mare, uh, one of the moon's smooth, dark lowlands, and plant a flag? We need the reference pictures. So we have a... a, a Specific, we can land on the moon anywhere, or we can land somewhere in particular. The perfect circle. Periapsis rocket sample, uh, Periapsis rocket supplies is suing us for using their company name. We explained that every orbit has a Periapsis and that it's not copyright infringement, but their lawyers think otherwise. They argue that if we can make, uh, if we make our orbit a perfect circle, we can just have one big apoapsis and leave Periapsis out of it. Our legal department needs our help. Make that circle and tell us what happens. So we want to establish an or orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis and periapsis, each between 99 kilometers and 101 kilometers. I love it. Okay, so these missions are way, way better than the missions from Kerbal Space Program 1 so far. We've got three missions. I don't know if I'm going to do the perfect circle one because I don't want to spend that much energy i have to worry about it really spending that much energy to get a perfect orbit before leaving the planet to go straight to the mun so that might be a future goal here we are some gamers with our mun mission one uh ready to go this is a fully capable mun lander we got um one two three four of these fuel cells uh powering a skipper this is a sustainer engine we have four liquid fuel boosters using flt 400s um uh, powering four Reliant engines. I don't have any control surfaces, but the skipper is a gimbling engine, so that'll help us do our pitch and stuff. 
This whole thing is meant, this stage right here is meant to get us entirely into orbit around Kerbin. Then we get into our booster stage, which is which is uh, fueled by a terrier. And this stage should give us plenty of, of Delta V with which to get us into, to leave Kerbin, go intercept with uh, Munner Orbit, and do Munner Orbit insertion, and bring us to a position where, where not only have we orbited the Mun, but then take us down uh, to a landing spot, or at least very close approach to a landing spot. Then this stage up here is all about the return trip. Doing the final touches for landing on the Mun, setting down, blasting off, establishing an orbit, departing the Mun, and returning to Kerbin. I just realized one flaw. We're going to go ahead and revert here. I thought I had fixed this in the vehicle assembly building before, but apparently I haven't. Quick save that, and we're going to put this stuff in here as well, so the engines all fire when the clamps release. Everyone ready? Let's go! And our rocket is underway. We don't have any fancy music because we rolled back. Uh, as usual, when I reach about 100 meters per second, we're going to pitch over to 10 degrees off of vertical, heading east. And then at this point, I'm going to turn the stabilization system off and let aerodynamics take over. Well, maybe I'll just let the pilot do his job. These engines are doing their work. The boosters will uh, expire first as opposed to the other rocket I built, where the boosters didn't. They uh, ran out of fuel after the main stage did, which was kind of funny. All right, we are definitely getting up into the part of the atmosphere where the Reliance lose some of their efficiency, but the, uh, the, um, the skipper gains some efficiency. And we're going to throttle down quite a bit for staging. In fact... We're actually going to throttle down... Because we have ourselves an 80 kilometer orbit coming up. Coming up on our countdown here, we've got... Six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. I am going to throttle down for staging. Those are out. Stage them off. Throttle up. Beautiful. So this timer isn't going to help us as much as this bar. Really ensuring that we are actually reaching our full orbit here, or very, very, very close to it. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish up our circularization here. And that's good enough for me. Okay, we are in space on our way to the Mun. Well, not yet. Default name seven. Yeah, we still have some debris floating out here, by the way, from previous missions. So we're going to go ahead and set our target. And our angular, our, our orbital plane is really, really good. Look for approximately the horizon to create a maneuver plan. Um, another way to do this actually is to sort of get this completely out of out of the way where it definitely wouldn't touch the Mun and sort of bring this to bring your peri uh, your prograde marker until your apoapsis just barely touches the Mun's uh, orbit and then you can uh, change where this happens to actually plan and intercept. So 
So it looks like that intercept actually just crashes us into it, which is sort of perfect. In six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. This terrier is going to do some work. This is a long burn, two and a half minutes. I could have probably used a, um, if I had used uh, the uh, swivel, it would have been just fine. Like the difference in Delta V wouldn't have been all that, all that much. And it might've been a much shorter burn. So we're a fair bit off of our prograde marker, which means we're not getting as much efficiency as we normally would. But I think we're still going to be in great shape, actually. How did we do? Our actual intercept is looking great. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn retrograde. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that now. We're fine. This is fine. We can go ahead and kill this burn. What we can do if we really, 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 really want to is right about here, plan a mid-course correction. And what this allows us to do is change our trajectory a little bit to possibly um, intercept the moon at different, uh, the moon, intercept the moon at different angles. Like for instance, this gives us something more approaching a free return trajectory, especially if we tune it up correctly. And we can really dial in this periapsis to where we want it. I'm going to go for, I think, 30 kilometers. Ought to be good. And we just lock that in place and tune it. 30 kilometer periapsis for the MUN. We'll make landing quite easy. In three, two, one, ignition. I'm just going to give a little bit of thrust here. So we can be precise with the amount of delta v that we need to apply. Boop. All right, we are once again in Mount orbit. No new science to to be had. But now that we're here, we can center on Mun and plan our um, orbital circularization. And they want us to land in one of the dark low zones, the lowlands areas. So we'll be looking for one of those to, to do. This is still all just using the same stage that we have, that we brought for this from Kerbin. We're under 10 seconds to go here until we hit full throttle to circularize our orbit around the Mun. One, ignition. Orbit is set to auto now, which means we've established an orbit. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition cutoff. I think uh, we have 661. 800 to get down. Oh, beautiful. Hang on. And I was like, where do we where do we actually put this thing down? Looks like we ought to do it be able to uh, do it right here. In fact, I can plan for that right now. I don't even need a maneuver node. So here's the secret to landing on Mun. You just burn retrograde until your um let's see the Mun's gonna spin from here counterclockwise. So I want to put my landing point earlier in this crater. Let's go ahead and fire up our rockets here. Landing point early in this crater. Boop. Right there should be good. They said in the lowlands, any of these dark areas ought to be pretty great for landing. We can actually use this. That's kind of cool. We can actually use this to let us know what our accurate landing spot would be 
and just do a death burn. Interesting. I'm going to try it. This is called a suicide burn, basically burning at the last second to bring ourselves to a stop. The whole time facing retrograde, so there it is, there's the lowlands. Coming up in 25 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. This slows us down, and since our pilot is keeping us retrograde, he'll always face the rocket in the direction of travel, which means it'll eventually face down towards the surface of the moon. I just hope I did this, did this, uh, did this right with the instruments I was given. If I need to abort, I'm actually going to do this. If I need to abort, we've got that stage, which will be, um, which will be, uh, have a, a lot more same thrust, less weight. So it'll be much more responsive. What I'm trying to say. Our surface velocity is coming down to nothing meters per second. And this is exactly what we want. We still have a thousand feet to go. So I'm going to keep us dropping at about 10 meters per second, just adjusting my throttle here and there. In fact, now we're just going to wait for it to, to run out. It's out. Next stage. That thing should detonate on the planet. And I'm going to, even though I, I'm facing retrograde, I'm going to give myself a little bit of sideways impulse there. There's the shadow. Boom. Okay, we were given the guide. If we set down at less than 10 meters per second, it should be fairly safe. This looks like relatively level ground. 250 meters to go. One hundred fifty meters to go. One hundred. I'm going to slow us down a little bit more. As soon as we get contact, I'm killing this engine. Boom. Brilliant. Our very first moon landing in Kerbal Space Program 2 uh, for science uh, exploration mode. Now we have lots of stuff that we can do. First of all, some experiments. We have some environmental data. We have some crew observations. Uh, the area seems dark and quiet. Let's hope there's no Kraken lurking about. The lack of uh, cratering in this mare suggests it cooled recently in geological terms. Our mission tracker says we've done one small step. Now we need to plant a flag within the mare and establish an, establish a store. We're not going to do that. We're going to plant a, plant a flag within the mare. Let's go ahead and extend this. So I'm going to turn off SES. We'll just let our Rocket, hopefully, settle down. We need to put the spring strength up on all these. There we go. Are we going to stay where we are? All right. Okay. 
Well, let's get out of this can <clears throat> and see about doing some stuff on the surface of the mud. Let's go ahead and go grab our experiments here. Oh, this is going to be so good. The samples and data. Oh, man. All right. Now we're going to plant a flag. Who is this? It's Bob. <clears throat> Bob was here. For the exploration of all curb in kind. These animations are great. All things considered, that's a pretty darn good shot. Okay, Sim Gamers. It is time with all of our science in tow. To figure out how to get back. I didn't bring any ladders or anything, so I'll just gonna jump up and grab that door right there. Brilliant board our craft. So <clears throat> we have completed one small step and first dibs and accumulated in the neighborhood of 220 something science to bring back. And that's what's next. This lander should now be able to get us all the way back to Kerbin with Delta V to spare. So the first thing we're going to do is launch moon eastward. And ditch that quick save and we don't need any staging we just get our engines running aim about this way and all I'm looking to get is an apoapsis of about 30 kilometers. I really don't even need that much. Seven, eight, nine, thirty. When we're at our apoapsis, we'll go ahead and thrust prograde to get us into a stable orbit. And then from there, plan our return trip to Kerbin. We're coming up on our apoapsis now. Fast forward time a little bit just to get closer. I'm not going to be too precious about it. We're just going to punch it. The amount of fuel we have looks good. Twenty-seven by thirty-eight. And plenty of Delta V, I'm pretty sure, to get us back home. If I really wanted to, I could do a plane correction, a plane change correction. But I'm not gonna worry about it that much. Kerbin's a bit big enough target. Once again, to return home, we are orbiting this way, right? Um, grab a node sort of in this vicinity and launch a prograde. Get out of the MUN's SOI. We're going to lock our, periop uh, our periapsis over there and turn this until that minimizes and then keep tuning from there.
That's a collision course. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't. I'm aiming for, if I can get it, 35 kilometers. very little bit of delta v makes a big difference all right the only re delta v required for this is 271 out of the 710 we have so we are in great shape let's go ahead and face our node and then time accelerate to get out of here a quick 18 second burn to do trans -curbin injection three two one and cut off Let's take a look at how we actually did. We actually did uh, a little bit too much. So we're gonna face retrograde and go ahead and correct that. So I'm just turning my ship around to the other direction it was facing. Because this is too steep. We'll end up, we may end up burning up in the atmosphere. So I'm just gonna apply just a little bit of thrust. Even with the, the least amount of thrust I can apply, it's very sensitive. So what we can do is warp to here. We have left the Mun's sphere of influence and we warped to here to do another mid-course correction. Basically, I want to fix that little bit of, of speed differential that we have. And at this point, here is an interesting trick we can do. I could thrust retrograde, certainly, and that would lower my periapsis. <clears throat> but if we think of this as a straight line in, a, in curved space, I'm going that way. And if I bend my line to the left, that means the periapsis gets closer and the apoapsis gets farther. So what happens if I turn radial in? So here I'm facing radial in. Apply just a little bit of thrust, and you can see it took hardly anything at all to change my periapsis. So in order to not change um, my altitude, I don't want any forward or uh, my minimum altitude here. I don't want any forward or prograde or retrograde impulse. And even breaking off a stage does give a rocket a little bit of impulse. So instead of doing that, <clears throat> I'm turning orbit normal, which is basically saying I'm going to face directly, um, essentially directly north, which is perpendicular to my plane of orbit right now, and get rid of this stage that I no longer need. There she goes. And as the sun rises... Our ship re enters its primary re-entry interface at 50 kilometers. Keefums left this comment on episode 1. Thanks for this video. I have always had troubles getting a smooth launch without mods, and you describe what you're doing and why every step of the way. Now for some training, and soon I'll be able to get a stable orbit much easier and with less stress. Thanks for the comment, Keefums. This kind of knowledge sharing and having fun along the way is precisely why I wanted to get into content creation in the first place. So here's where that comment comes in handy. If I deploy my drogue shoot too soon, I'll end up coming down on land. So I want to make sure that I'm basically past land before I pull my drogue shoot. Or reasonably sure that I'm going to be uh, all right. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Now the drogue is out. And I want to thank the uh, viewer for giving me that tip. Because it gives me a, a little bit of control over where the where I'm going to land based on where I deploy the drogue. 40, 30, 20, 10, and splash down. My vessel is recoverable. We could do some science, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. We're just going to go ahead and recover. 
our very first Mun Landing in episode, what is this, three of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2 for science. We landed on the moon. We did it. You did it. With this achievement, the entire Kerbolar system is ours to explore. We're getting some next level science from the crew's observations and the head of the snack department finally left. They didn't even blink. Newton had to keep spritzing their eyes. The Mun? Definitely not edible. All in all, I'm glad the cheese thing is behind us. I hope the snacks department can recover from this setback. Who knows? Maybe they can pivot to rock candy. <laughs> this calls for a celebration. Macchiatos for everyone. Oh, these little vignettes are awesome. Oh, so good. Thanks, science. The first dibs. Go ahead and submit that. Great work. Maxo Construction said the live feed was deemed acceptable by Francois, which is his highest praise. <laughs> they clearly think a lot of themselves. His note said, congrats on becoming relevant. F. We're the first space program on Kerbin. I swear, some manufacturers are never satisfied. Let's try to stay on good terms, though. I heard there's a possibility for another toy line in the near future. Thanks, science. And that is it, Sim Gamers, for this episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access for Science. Until next time, I've been Sim Gamer. <laughs>